Hey, I here tonight am going to be doing just kind of a ramble about a topic I've been wanting to talk something about and add my thoughts to. And because I am a giant nerd, I don't know if you've noticed, but I am. Surprise, surprise. Um, but that is something that is kind of controversial, uh, and that is Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition. 4th edition has had a, a lot of negativity surrounding it. Uh, a lot of people that like I talk to, like especially like people who've been playing D and D for a while, often list it as the worst edition of D and D to exist. Uh, and I just kind of want to talk about that, and unpack it because I have a lot of experience with fourth edition, and it's been a few years now since fifth edition came out, and that's kind of became the main one while I personally kind of shifted more towards the Pathfinder side of things, although I've also played the other edition. Um, and there's just been a bit of time to unpack and really like look back and like, oh, how was 4th edition? Uh, so, now, if you don't know, Dungeons and Dragons come, has various editions throughout the years. Uh, the first one was just Dungeons and Dragons. It's also just first edition. It was also known as like the Red Box, and that was it established a lot of the archetypes, you uh, like that we see today. It is arguably one of the most influential like games to exist um, on gaming. That is uh, also in general. Uh, it, it's like. If you get to modern, like fantasy as a whole, even not just games and literature and stuff, it is the stepping stone from. If you're, I'm talking about Western fantasy, of course. Um, multiculturalism and fantasy is another topic for another day. Um, but you have the stepping stones of uh, Western European mythology. Then the next big one is well, Renaissance romantic writers, um, and then Tolkien. Then arguably from Tolkien to Dungeons and Dragons to Dungeons and Dragons to modern fantasy. Uh, and that is a tangent, but this is a whispered ramble, so what do you do? Um, then after that came out, uh, I don't have dates for all these, uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, or known as Second Edition. Uh, this is probably if you have someone who's been playing Dungeons and Dragons for 30 years, they were probably playing advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, until the early 2000s, it was the main uh, form, and it was just a, an expansion onto the original. Uh, in uh, 2000, and like I think it was 2001, that third edition came out. Uh, this was the first one that Wizards of the Coast published. This is when I started playing Dungeons and Dragons. I learned on 3rd edition. I learned to read on 3rd edition. Like I said, I am a giant nerd. Uh, and it was a, a revamp. It changed a lot. Um, when we talk about 4th edition, people complain about like, oh, 4th edition changed way too much. 3rd edition, 2nd to 3rd edition? had way more changes to the game than 3rd to 4th, and they were, okay, I wasn't, I was like 7 at the time, so I don't really know a lot of like the overall response. It was also before like the massive rise of the internet as we know it today, so that changes things a little bit, um, but it changed a lot. Uh, it used to be a thing called FACO, uh, which is fun, and uh, just changed a lot of like how things, the whole D20, like the D20 system was kind of established around that time. And I think, oh, rollback, uh, 
second edition, if probably nowadays, your best bet if you want to like know what second edition's about is uh, if you've played Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, uh, those Infinity Engine games, uh, they like especially with the like recent in recent years, there's been revamps and ports to modern stuff. Uh, those are second edition Dungeons and Dragons. So if you want to check that out, second edition, check out those. All the fun of Thacko and weird class race restrictions and weird multi-classing. Um, it is a vanilla tea tonight. Uh, and then third edition had 3.5, which was essentially a update, a revamp of some things that weren't working out. Uh, because I mean, third edition was a big change, and they needed to like fix some things. They didn't get it all right the first time. And then, that was 3rd edition. And then, 4th edition was the next big revamp. Um, also around the time of 4th edition, uh, Pathfinder split off. It stopped being developed by wizards. Um, well, essentially they took D&D 3.5 and made D&D 3.75. Um, and called, it's, but it's called Pathfinder. And it's its own kind of stuff and it's evolving and things like that so uh but then fourth edition came fourth edition if i was to sum up what fourth edition was like the goal of fourth edition was and it was balance it was all about balancing the game and making it making a lot of more options viable where You'll see, um, like in a lot of things, I'll show you my chart here. Um, there's a, oops, there's a pretty common chart that, um, you see where, uh, about, uh, if on this axis you have like, this is not showing up well, uh, never mind that. Uh, you'll have like the chart of the steady growth, like fighter power level just slowly goes up over time. And then, like, starts pretty high, and then keeps going up at a say rate. And then you just see the wizard power level, and it just starts bare minimum, and then just exponentially rockets off <laughs> far above it. And fourth edition was trying to consolidate that. Uh, in previous editions, like, one main criticism of fourth edition was that. And that a lot of people say is like, but there's so many fewer options when it comes to feats and classes and skills and like different builds and archetypes. But even if like D and D three three point oh, I'll okay, when I refer to D and D third edition, I'm talking about third three point five, and honestly Pathfinder two. Um, they might have ten times the number of options, but still nine out of ten of those are either strictly worse or just outright inferior. Uh, fourth edition, all the choices not, are not all op absolutely optimal, but they're all viable. It was really hard to make a bad character in fourth edition. Obviously, some are better than others, but it's a game. You're not going to have everything be perfectly balanced regardless of like build craft and stuff. But there was still plenty of room for build craft and like fiddling around things and lots of cool things you can do. Um, it was the, the, the combat and like a lot of the skills and spells and stuff were, were simplified in a lot of ways, uh, which made just things kind of easier. And overall, it was honestly to this day, I think the best uh, format for new players, uh, conditions apply, those conditions being, I would say that it would be the best if it was still played widely, like it's still played in some circles, but for a new player, it's probably better to struggle through like 5th edition, which is still pretty good. Um, I'm not going to be including 5th edition in this discussion, because as a retrospective, um, 
it's not fair to compare an edition to something that came like after it because like fifth edition was made to address a lot of the problems and concerns of fourth edition and learning from its lessons so obviously it's going to be better uh i mean what could not it doesn't have to be better but wizards is pretty good about that <laughs> they they know what they're doing most of the time Um, so the, but it, it was, since, but since no one plays it, it's better to, for a new player to like learn 5th edition, so they'll like be able to play a group later, then may, even though like 4th edition might be better for easier to learn and easier to make your own builds and stuff. Um, also 4th edition, more than any other edition, was so much easier on Dungeon Masters. You could, in 3rd edition, if you wanted to understand, like, a monster, and it wasn't like a level 1 goblin, you probably had to study and prep and learn that monster, learn all its special attacks, cross-reference its spells, and know what it does, and figure out what its strategy is. And that was just, it was so taxing to run monsters, if you had never run it before, and learning new ones and stuff. And I find myself, even from the Pathfinder, like, falling back on running the same exact monsters every single time. Or same exact ones that are then, excuse me, reskinned. Um, but in 4th edition, I really should have brought out some 4th edition books for this. Um, you just looked at a block that gave you all of its attacks, it's all its stats, just clearly labeled out everything you needed to know was on that block and maybe a short paragraph describing its, its strategy. But even then, the strategy was usually apparent. And he, I could just straight up improvise saying, like, I needed a quick level, like, four enemy here. Okay, I go to the appendix of the monster manual, I look at this level four monster, flip over to its page. I have never, maybe never run this monster before, I've never fully read its stat block. I could run it with maybe 30 seconds of prep time. Uh, and then other things like the whole idea of like treasure parcels where it had all charted out to stay balanced how much treasure and which level of magic items to give people each time and just the amount of prep i have to do for a fourth edition campaign versus a third pathfinder or even fifth edition campaign was so much less uh, i personally am a, I run very story-based games where I want to focus on the narrative. Like, I am content with going an entire session and never entering combat. Uh, I mean, I do enter combat for things, but I like combat to matter. Um, I don't like random fights with wolves in the woods, uh, unless it's like going to actually progress the story. Uh, but it's my own damning style that is not relevant. Well, that is relevant. It's like, that is biases that I have and you should know. But just 4th edition, the simplification of a lot of mechanics and like, or not necessarily simplification, but streamlining of a lot of mechanics, let me more focus on the story, which I really liked. Um, common criticisms that, uh, like, one of the most common criticisms though of fourth edition was that people were just like angry that oh they changed such and such and such and such like different iconic things like the go-to pointed one was magic missile magic missile is probably the most iconic spell of Dungeons and dragons uh i mean if you're looking at third edition it's automatic hit you depending on your level you make up to five missiles each one does 1d4 plus one damage if you've played a wizard or played it for any time time, you know magic missile by the heart. Like, it's not a complex spell, but it is a wizard's bread and butter. Uh, and it wasn't really changed from 2nd edition to 3rd edition, but then 4th edition came along and it was very different. Um, and people didn't like that, although, it, but it was then errated to be the same, uh, or more or less the same. Uh, but people tend to ignore that. Um, 
but the people are like, oh, how could you change magic missile? But it's like, yeah, they changed magic missile. I think, uh, I think it was Rodrigo who was like, had, was this his big thing? Rodrigo, the host of uh, Critical Hit, um, probably one of the, at least a fourth edition was probably the biggest podcast, like D and D campaign podcast of fourth edition. I think it's pretty, it's still going on in fourth edition. Um, I need to catch up on that. Um, it's also really good. You should check it out. Critical Hit. It's great. Great story. Great characters. It's it's really great. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, but he said like, yeah, they changed magic missile, but they also changed elves and how armor works. They changed the fundamentals of combat, how flanking works, how combat advantage, like the whole concept of combat advantage. They changed skills, hit points, the ability scores themselves to some extent. Like, they changed all of this. Like, it is a new addition to the game. Things are not going to be the same. And I do understand from a certain point, like, certain iconic things should stay somewhat iconic. Like, I felt like Magic Miss Life was kind of a misstep, where, like, that should have been made a bit more iconic. But then they, like, point to just, like, another thing, where it's like, this isn't the same, this isn't the same, this isn't the same. It's, like, be glad they kept the names. Like, the flavor's still there, the feel is still there, but just isn't necessarily strictly that, like, exactly the same, because it is a different game. Uh, what else? What was my next time? But, like, I feel 4th edition gets a lot of undeserved hate because of that, that people weren't expecting it. It was also not really an addition made to target enfranchised players. Like, it was honestly made for newer players where it was easy to play a character. It was easy to just sit down and look at a character sheet or learn your collection of powers and stuff, and you could run it per with like a pretty simple explanation. It was easy to build, it was easy to level up, and you could like focus on like mechanics and learning things. And was it a little bit simplified? Was it a little streamlined? Yeah. And the average player who complains about that is a very specific kind of player. These are the people who like to come up with really cool, intricate builds and be optimal and focus on combat and things like that. I feel very, I hear very few story-driven D&D players complaining about fourth editions for a lot of the same reasons. Like, there's minor complaints or like here and there that are like kind of universal, but the story-driven people just it's it's kind of a, a split there uh, but yeah it isn't made for power gamers it isn't made for your spikes um, I guess that's a magic term not a dandy term oh well um, I mean it applies um, uh, and I feel that that upset a lot of people uh, but I just, I feel also a lot of people didn't give it time. Uh, like, I think the existence of Pathfinder is uh, indicative of how people just didn't give it time, where they looked at it and they said, nope, this is, I don't want to do this. And so they, there was a Splinter game made off and Pathfinder uh, came out. And uh, yeah, Pathfinder is like, better for those people, but Pathfinder is horrendous for a new player. Like, learning Pathfinder is a hard task. Uh, and same thing with 3rd edition and previous editions. 5th edition, I think, meets a comfortable middle ground, but even then, it's it wasn't the addition for a lot of the critics of it. And it wasn't meant strictly to be the addition for them. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't think the game saw a lot of as much growth as it has, especially compared to like recent years, where recent years like fifth edition has actually been booming due to a large increase in like new players and things like that. Like 
I hear a lot more people that excited and playing be, like during fifth edition times and I think there's a variety of factors to that uh, but like not to mention like I feel like things like uh, the adventure zone really helped like get that ball rolling and, and because that exposed a lot of new audience who wouldn't otherwise play uh, and it's really helping open up the community a little bit because like, even up to the time of 4th edition, like, D&D was kind of like this, I wouldn't say, like, closed community, but it was really hard to get into if you weren't putting in, like, a lot of work to break into it, and you had to kind of know someone to really get into the game, and 5th edition is really good for, like, opening that up, and I feel the same atmosphere would have been really great with 4th edition, because 4th edition, I feel is very welcoming to new players and they just weren't able to and timing didn't line up uh i mean all this is not to say that i feel that fourth edition had some glaring problems uh things like uh characters will like very balanced and like there's lots of easy things to do at early levels to like combats started to feel the same once you reached the like end of heroic um in fourth edition there was like three tiers of play one through ten was called heroic 11 through 20 was paragon and epic was beyond that but the end of heroic and paragon combat started to feel stale where you would just run down a checklist of your encounter abilities. Okay, we're done with that, maybe throw in a daily. Now do that and repeat and rinse. And the pace of combat was not wonderful. Um, even with most well-oiled groups like monsters, the monsters really didn't have a good ratio of hit points and damage. Like combat just dragged on and on and on where while the characters themselves were balanced well with each other, I felt the monster player balance was still off. Like, by the end of 4th edition, I was essentially taking monsters, having their HP, and doubling their damage to increase the threat and speed of combat. Uh, like, combats, I feel, should be snappy. Like, this isn't... D&D, at least for me, with the story driven games, D&D shouldn't have, like, combat should not be the entire session and fourth edition it often was would i think that kind of shapes even now that i'm not playing fourth edition as much anymore why i avoid combat because it was it it became such a hassle if any any game that was above level five and it made things like dungeon crawls impossible because it would take just ages to get through um and like I tried tweaking so many things, like let's increase things. It's it's there wasn't enough room to just have both characters with the the, the feeling of danger while still having combat move quickly. Uh, players had too much HP. Like one thing that I like about Pathfinder is that the threat is always there. Uh, even at mid, like, even a few level, like, mid levels up to level 10, like, there are monsters that can straight up one shot you. And you gotta be careful, you gotta maneuver, you have to make sure your tank's in the front. Whereas, 4th edition, like, yeah, no, you can just, it, it doesn't matter if you're a wizard, you can honestly kind of get wailed on for a while. And you're probably fine, uh, unless, like, I'm specifically, like, overpowering the encounters but then it runs into the problem of the encounters drag on for way too long because they have too much hip too many hit points and it drags on even if i cut it it isn't quite enough and it just there wasn't a comfortable medium and i tried to make it work i tried to make it work i tried to make it work and it just i couldn't get it there i tweaked so many variables and on the on the monster side because it doesn't feel good to players being like, hey, all your player characters uh, cut your HP in half. Uh, so that that was an issue I had. 
Um, another issue I had was, I mentioned this before, where, like, combat just became, like, one, two, three, four, going down, and, like, just going through your abilities, and, uh, uh, it got really stale. It, it even playing different characters felt the same. It, it, uh, I don't know how to talk about it, like, I did not, like, at towards the end of 4th edition, I didn't enjoy playing a player at all, and, at least in combat, and I kind of, like, just stopped doing that entirely, and I've kind of moved, I haven't actually played a player since then, honestly, uh, because it just, every class started to feel the same because of the power system, and that was the common criticism where the power system, uh, which I probably should explain, essentially every character would have so many encounter at will powers, which they could use at will, so many encounter powers, which they could use once per like fight or so, and then so many daily powers, which they could use once per day. And the common criticism was that it made everyone into wizards, or spellcasters at least. Um, or your fighter would have different like like swipe strikes and combat and like maneuvers and stuff you could do, whereas like the wizards would just have different spells and stuff. And I felt that it did make a lot of the character classes feel the same and different only in like minutia and flavor. Um, the the one time I really loved playing a play a character in DD was when I was playing a character that the game really wasn't meant to support. And that was me, uh, whatchamacallit, words, I mean things. Uh, God. Uh, playing a dedicated healer, where I didn't attack at all. No attacks, I only healed, and I might have power gamed it a bit too much and, like, had an insanely broken character. But that's not the point. Um, and, like, I really enjoyed that, and because it felt distinct, unlike so many of the other characters. Uh, also, the power system, well, I, I love the idea of encounter abilities, because it happens in video games, it happens in D&D, where daily abilities goes unused because of the mentality of, but what if I need it? But encounter abilities kind of mo moved around that. Um, going back to the problem of combat being so taxing, where dailies became the problem of combat rarely there was really more than one maybe two combats during a day uh, in game day and this caused like why use my day like why even save my dailies like and that changes the balance of fights even further and it uh, causes issues I understand that part of that is my own DMing style but it still was frustrating uh, that that balance wasn't quite there necessarily. Um, but yeah, and I guess like my last like main problem with fourth edition was it really did require like it was very hard to share books, which is I think one of the biggest points against it being good for new players. If you were playing a character, you needed to have your own player's handbook so you could reference all your abilities, assuming you weren't uh, writing them all down and splitting with them, but then you have to split with someone, you have to have like easy access to one of the books. And that's just, it's, it's a big investment to ask a new player to, here, drop 30 to $40 on a player's handbook. And that isn't good for getting new players involved. And obviously you don't need that, but it still, it, it was, it was, it got to the point where I was having essentially to write out all my players' abilities because, like, they just didn't have access to book and, like, for reasons because we were, like, in high school and college that we just couldn't, they couldn't drop the money on a player's handbook or any supplemental product they needed for that to reference their powers. Um, they, that they, like, couldn't do without that. And 
it just ended up being a lot of work for me. Uh, but the another problem is that, well, not problem, but in like other editions, it's like if you're playing a fighter in Pathfinder, you don't need to reference your abilities all the time because you don't have that many. You know your attacks and your feats. Like, obviously, don't play a wizard if you don't. You're not gonna have access to like the books and stuff, but like a ranger or fighter in like any of the martial type classes, like you're gonna be fine. Uh, and it was just like there was way too much having to reference the book, and you were kind of living out your book and not your character sheet, which was kind of, like caused some disconnect uh, there. And I don't know, that is just like a problem of the power system. Like I believe fourth edition was very flawed in a lot of ways and it had a lot of issues but I don't think I would necessarily call it like the worst thing to come out like come out like of of um much my hot words I mean things uh to come out of uh gosh talking is hard uh, it isn't the worst thing to come out of like an edition like it had so many great points and it was playable the levels one through five experience were phenomenal uh and well balanced it was great uh i still think it is probably the best edition if you just want to have a one-shot game because it's easy if like i type up one of my summer sheets just for or i print out an old one and you can look at that you know your abilities you can just run through them and it's pretty self-explanatory and I feel for one shots it's great. It's easier to learn new characters easily since they do run similar. They play them similarly. And I feel that it didn't get the patience it needed. Uh, there was some stuff with like, I think it was called D&D Beyond, which was kind of like edition 4.5, but it didn't really get as much like publicity and like attention as I think it could have. Um, it was kind of the prototype 5th edition in a lot of ways, where it was kind of like striking the middle ground between 4th edition and 3rd edition. Um, and so many good things came out of it. Like the, the rules of combat I felt were a lot cleaner and easier to understand. I felt the emphasis on balance. I feel so many people overlook that I'm talking about not balanced between characters and NPCs because that was an issue. Um, but the balances between the classes is so much better than any other edition. And honestly, I'm including 5th edition in that because like 5th edition still has that unbalance where like mages are still kind of weaker at the beginning compared to fighters and then they get much better. Um, not so much better, but um, and that I just felt it was so much better. The fact that a new player or a relatively inexperienced player could make a character on their own without having to reference a bunch of guides on the internet and not have it horribly underpowered. Um, and I just felt it helped enable a lot of story-driven campaigns by like not having to worry as much about the emphasis on the mechanics. Uh, now, I don't know really where I am fully going with this. I just had a bunch of ideas that I probably should have formulated a bit better. And I don't know, I just don't like about how a lot of people who didn't really fully give 4th edition a chance just decrying it as like the worst thing to come out of Dungeons and Dragons. And because I feel like there's a lot of good things like that come out of it, like skill challenges, and honestly, I think skill challenge is the best thing to come out of fourth edition. <laughs> but even then, the skill challenge rules isn't even from that I use isn't even from fourth edition. But the idea of skill challenge, you, 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 you get the idea. Uh, but and one thing I do with with any game I play is that I play games to understand games. I want to understand how they're put together. I want to understand why they're enjoyable or not enjoyable. And 
if you suddenly dismiss something as universally bad, you, especially like the gamers are like, you don't, you're not likely to learn anything from it. I grew as a player and a dungeon master more in 4th edition than I did probably in any other edition I've played. Uh, it is like learning things like, uh, like just getting into the mechanics of like, wow, like of game design of like how does do these monsters fare against each other? How do they t I tweak them to make them work? And it turned out to be a very difficult task that I was never really fully to figure out in a simple like a universal matter like a fix for that. Uh, and like the idea like a lot I my I was able to improve my narrative abilities very well, and. I feel in any game I play, I want to have that learning experience and move that into my other campaigns where, and other games and stuff, where I want to take things from like all the editions I play and even non D and D games that I do and put them into my games that I play nowadays, where I want every campaign to be better than the last and using all the lessons learned and. Maybe one day I'll like write an article or, or a blog post or something that more formally caps capsulates my thoughts about fourth edition, like how I feel about it. But yeah, no, I just fourth edition has a very special place in my heart because it's when I really started to play D and D. Like I played third edition kind of, but that was honestly a lot of me apart from like a few like small campaigns, just sitting, essentially being a bored elementary school, middle school, early high school student, and just playing, like reading books and like building, building worlds and things like that. I never actually like really gone into it. But fourth edition is where I like really started playing D&D &D a lot. Um, I played probably three major campaigns that like lasted for more than a year um, or so that in it and numerous smaller ones and some of like my greatest memories in D&D came in 4th edition and it just holds a special place in my heart for that reason uh, even if it is flawed and I would probably never run a campaign in it again <laughs> no well, I hope you, I don't know, enjoyed me rambling about nerd stuff for the last half an hour or so. Uh, well, I hope you sleep well.